Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for yet more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing one of the spiciest decks I think I've had on the channel for quite some time. We're playing a Demigod of Revenge deck. Now if you're unfamiliar with Demigod of Revenge, it's a 5 mana 5-4 five, flying haste creature, but when you cast it, return all cards named Demigod of Revenge from your graveyard to the battlefield. So there's a trigger that goes on and if your opponent makes a mistake and counters it while that trigger's on, you get the thing back. But the idea for this deck is that we're going to be casting Intuition to put two Demigod of Revenge in our graveyard and one in our hand. Then we'll cast that one in our hand and bash our opponent for 15. That's the game plan, more or less, which is certainly an interesting one. We've got some other bits and pieces here to go with it. So we've got our Brainstorm Ponders and our Force of Will. So we've got like the core of good blue stuff. We've got three Dark Rituals, which is an interesting amount of acceleration for sure, but that's what we have. Three Currency Converter, which is also an interesting one. It has a little bit of text with things like Collective Brutality and Timeless Dragon here. Not entirely sure why we have three of them, but I guess it helps us get rid of Demigod Revenge. It's sort of a colourless way of cycling through them, which makes some sense. Uh, we also have From the Catacombs as well. So this is an interesting one. So put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control with a corpse counter on it. You take the initiative. If that creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead. And this has got escape. So we can intuition for From the Catacombs and two Arcan of Cruelties and just put Arcan of Cruelty into play using the escape cost. So that's another thing we can do with our intuitions. Uh, there's probably a whole bunch of other stuff here that we're going to find as we go. Uh, we've got four, four Baleful Strix, which is just a really good blue card that's going to go up the works for a lot of people who are trying to attack us, as well as um, draw us a card, get us into our deck. It's just a great card right now. And yeah, pretty happy to see this in the deck. Collective Brutality, if you're not familiar with this one, you can duress your opponent, you can minus two a creature, or you can drain two. So usually it's going to be like minus two and duressing them most of the time. But things can change. Teferi means that if we're trying to do our silly stuff, if Teferi's in play, we just get to do it. And our opponent can't react, which is rather cool. Timeless Dragon here is going to be a bit mana fixing, but it's it goes quite well with our currency converter. And again, it's just another thing that we can play from the graveyard and something that we can intuition if we just need bodies. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the creature stuff. There's some interesting things in the land. So... We have one Plains and one Island, which is going to be very difficult to cast Demigod of Revenge with. So I'm a little bit sceptical about that personally, but we'll see how that pans out. And then we've got Lake of the Dead. So if you're unfamiliar with this one, when it enters the battlefield, you have to sacrifice a swamp. And then it taps for black, or you can tap it for black, or, or you can tap it and sacrifice a swamp to add four black. So this is often going to be how we're playing the Demigod of Revenge. That's why it's four of them in the, uh, three of them in here. And it makes four black mana, so we need to find one black mana on top of that. We do have a single turn herbal, which will hopefully fix the rest of our mana. Again, we have a Tundra here, which doesn't cast Demigod, which is another thing I'm a little bit concerned about. But I was sent this list, and look at it. It's a thing of beauty, so of course I'm going to give it a whirl. Sideboard-wise, what have we got? We got some Dowthy Voidwalkers to hate on people's graveyards, which is also like a nice thing we can try and floop out on turn one with a ritual. We've got a few Thoughtseize to disrupt our opponent's hands, whether they're combo or control things we need to poke holes in. Force of Negation, mainly for combo decks that are trying to go underneath us, because obviously we can't use this to protect our combo turns. We've got three Source to Plowshares. Sometimes we're going to need removal for early little guys, whether that's Containment Priest or whatever. It's going to be pretty useful. We have another land that doesn't cast Demigod Revenge. So again, I'm not entirely certain about this one myself, but, you know, it's a good card. We're boarding it in. It's not going to be replacing a land some of the time. It's probably just going to be an additional sort of spell effectively. But we'll sort of play that by ear as we get there. Engine Explosives, like sort of catch-all to blow some stuff up, along with Void Rend, which is, again, is a catch-all to blow some stuff up. I've not played with this card before. Destroy target non-land permanent. This spell can't be countered. That's kind of a nice way of just saying no to something. It's one more mana than Abrupt Decay, but can hit anything non-land instead of just CMC3 or lower. So hopefully we can blow some cool stuff up with it. But yeah, that's pretty much the deck. And... I'll be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to play, and I'm probably going to make some mistakes along the way, but it should be a fun experience doing it. That's the hope, anyway. So before we jump into a league with this uh, beautiful creation, like, comment, subscribe. These are things you can do to help my channel out. They cost you nothing. Why not show me some love? I've also got a Discord. You can find the link in the description, and you can join the Discord and chat about my videos or legacy in general or whatever, and just hang out, really. 
With all that said and done, let's try and play a Legacy League with good old Demigod of Revenge. I have no idea if I'm supposed to keep this one, but we do have a nice curve of Currency Inverter into Collective Brutality for some free value. And then we also have a Teferi, which is going to shut down a lot of stuff, so I think we give this a go. Volcanic Island from our opponent into Ponder. So this could be something like a Sneak Attack, Show and Tell type deck. Or it could be more on the sort of the Delver Spectrum, could even be some sort of red control deck. Although a lot of those hot band decks have become just regular band, but we'll see. A Bauble. Okay, so this is probably going to be some sort of Delvery deck, and they're playing this for Delirium. They're going to see the top card of our library. They're going to be a spicy one. It's a very spicy one. Wowzers. Um, okay. So I think we're supposed to just get a Swamp here, because our opponent is a Wasteland deck. Although if we get a Swamp here, we don't get to cast out a Fairy. So maybe we're supposed to get a C, just so we can cast our spells. Okay, let's try and play a Currency Converter. We could have gone and got a Basic here, like uh, an, like a Plains, but we still have to get a non-Basic with our Marsh Flats, so we may as well lean into that, because we don't necessarily want to rely on our Herbal getting us there to cast these. That's what our opponent does here. A Wasteland. Sure, that's the thing we didn't want to see happen. Alrighty then. But our opponent isn't committing threats to the board, at least. So it's a re it's a tempo play that's not actually going to make the biggest difference immediately, but obviously can do in subsequent turns. A ponder. Okay. I'm down for a ponder. I think we still want a C here. We're going to need to find a white source anyway. So. Okay, I like these cards. They help us get towards the five manas. And also has some nice stuff we can do with that currency converter. So we're going to want to play a land next turn. So if we want to cycle the Timeless Dragon, we don't really have that opportunity available to us. So I think we have to put Ponder on the bottom, then the Scrub Land, then the Timeless Dragon. That way we can draw the land, then we can cycle the Timeless Dragon for the other land, and then we're getting pretty close to five mana then. And if we can just start playing Demigods of Revenge, I think we'll probably be in an okay spot. I imagine these are going to be relatively big, although Mertai Regent is definitely going to be bigger than what we're doing. So we got Sorcery, Land, Artifact. So an instant will mash this, which is pretty annoying for the purposes of our Collective Brutality right now. So we could just try and Collective Brutality this. But if they just get the thing online, then we're going to be in trouble. I think we're supposed to... I think we're supposed to cycle here. Our Rogue can deal with this as well. But if they have an instant, I think it's stupid trying to attack this because it's just going to kill us. It's just going to invalidate what we do with our brutality. Okay, so we've seen uh, Tropical Island as well. Yeah, so it had a brainstorm. So if we'd have pointed the brutality at this, we would have just wasted our turn. A spell pierce. Okay, so our opponent's sort of more on the rug delvery sort of vibe here. We can use a Teferi to bounce away a Merc Tide. We're not blocking this, because we can't. We'll cycle this time dragon at the end of turn, put it under the currency converter, and make a 2-2. So this looks like a Merc Tide from our opponent, which is pretty terrible news for us. Merc Tide Regent, sure. Only a 6-6, just a casual 6-6. Six, six. Going to get ourselves a Plains. I guess we're supposed to get a Scrubland here. Just again, keeping the black sources. And we will make a Rogue here. Hmm, a tricky choice here. We can try the Teferi out, but they haven't used a Daze yet. So the, the Teferi is quite likely to get dazed. We can try as Collective Brutality now, we're more likely, although one instant again can flip the channeler. Oh, it's tough. I think we're going to Collective Brutality. We're going to duress them so that we can try and resolve our Teferi next turn. And minus two. I don't think we can discard another. If we discard a land here, actually. If we discard a land and a Demigod, we can play Demigod next turn and get two Demigods back. Because we'll get a treasure from the Converter. So choose target opponent, choose target creature, choose target opponent. So we'll pay black and blue, threaten some sort of plow. We'll get rid of a demigod and we'll get rid of, is it supposed to be the Urborg here? I think it is supposed to be the Urborg because this can go and get us blue if we get waste handed off of Underground Sea and we want to cast our Teferi. So we get to put two things under our currency converter here. I don't know if we want to put the second one underneath it is the problem here. Because if they blow this up, then it'll be gone. So I think we just say no here. We're missing out on a rogue. But we're hopefully getting a bit more flexibility. Like, they could bounce this, and then we don't get the thing. 
Or is this going to be a force of will? Force of will pitching a daze. Sure. That's probably one of the things we would take anyway. We just don't get to kill their guy and gain two life. So not ideal for us. But next turn we can try and put two demigods of revenge into play. We can definitely put one demigod of revenge into play. But not sure how good that's going to be. But against the rug deck, they might not have a lot of ways of blowing that up. One can hope at least. Sure. So this is nine. So two lightning bolts does kill us here. It's going to feel pretty bad doing... Uh, we're not discarding anything this turn, so we will save this now so they can't bounce the treasure or something silly like that for us. Well, that's a pretty good draw, but I think the best thing to do here is to make some demigods. That's what we came here to do. Uh, we'll get another underground C. Let's get treasure token. Let's cast this. Black, 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 black. Unfortunately, these lads have got to stay back on blocks for now. So we'll send in the rogue because these have got flying. If we have to chump block with demigods, we can draw another demigod and maybe play play more demigods. So if we bounce the Merc Tide, they will be able to redeploy it pretty much immediately. But it will save us a round of combat. So let's see what happens here. Just that guy coming. Okay, and no, they're both coming in. So we can either play around them having a lightning bolt here. Or we can play around them. Hmm, I think we have to block like this to survive a lightning bolt. We haven't seen a lightning bolt out of them yet. Dragon's Race Channeler, sure. And a Tarmogoy. Okay, I would like to draw a land this turn so I can deploy both the things in our hand. So this is black and blue. Can we get this in? You've got Force of Will Blue card, your last two cards. You do not. Okay, that's pretty good. Intuition. That's not really the one. We didn't find the land here. Um, tough. Um, I guess we're supposed to cycle now. In case we draw a land, because then we can play a land and then do a, do a cast two three drops next turn. Lake of the Dead. Okay, that's a pretty good one. We'll get rid of this intuition. We will put this under the currency converter. Yes. So next turn, we can play the Lake of the Dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can cast the Arcan of Cruelty next turn. Should start turning things around for us, hopefully. We're close to stabilising here. Our Archon has to resolve as well. But they did let us get both of our demigods back. So they could have countered one of them. That's what's coming in here. It's either everything or nothing, right? Let's go to blocks. So this goes here. This goes here. This goes here. We dodge a lightning bolt. We remove two creatures. Our Archon of Cruelty can pick up the other creature. That's the plan. There's a wasteland. That's an annoying one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we don't have enough. And it's tough. A ponder. Um, I think we do ponder here. Let's try this one out. We can bounce the Tarmogoyf if we find another land here. We did not find another land. Uh, I guess this means any order and shuffle here. A currency converter. So this makes us a rogue to block with. So we can double block here. One, two, three. So I can play Teferi right now, but it'll be into a daze. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh dear, it's tough. Um, right, let's float a blue. Play as Lake of the Dead. And cast this. Um, can we afford to attack here is the question. I don't think we can because if they have a Brazen Borrower, they play the Borrower, they beat us for three and then hit us with a Lightning Bolt that's in their hand. I think we have to play scared here and not attack with our demigod. Next turn we have one, two... Yeah, next turn we can make an Arcan of Cruelty. It's going to cost us some resources, but our opponent clearly didn't have a counter spell, because I think you counter that to Teferi. Just a time ago, if sure. Also, we have a Teferi in place, so... Counter spells are not a thing our opponent gets to do here. Okay, they're scooping. Interesting. Um, they must know that they're dead soon, I guess. We've got a whole bunch of cards in hand. I think if I were them, I'd like wait to see some more of the stuff we've got going on. But, okay. So, we're looking at some sort of Delvery matchup. So, Source of Plowshares is going to be pretty good here. Void Rend is expensive, but a guaranteed way of killing Merc Tide is something I'm down for. Down through Void Walker also has some pretty good text here. I don't think we want to be trying to trade two-for-ones with Force of Wills in sort of Delvery matchups. Engine Explosives also has some useful text, if that's a thing we want. I like... A lot of the stuff we've got in our deck, though. So maybe that's the 
the four and then we need to try and see if we've got any space to fit in these dowsy void walkers and stuff how likely do i feel we are to resolve intuitions in this matchup maybe intuition isn't going to be so hot for us and we, these can be some dowsy void walkers and we're just going to play sort of like a weird mid-rangey deck because there's going to be pyroblasts and stuff coming our way maybe we just get rid of all those intuition oh, it's, it's obviously so good with the demigods though We've got loads of cantrips and things. And I'd rather have that. I'd rather have a singleton intuition. Or a second void rend. Hmm. That's tough. I think we'll keep the intuition in. And see how it plays. Okay, and I've not played a single game with this deck before today, so it's all new and exciting for me. But we managed to stabilise quite nicely there. Uh, we cannot keep this one because Lake of the Lead Dead doesn't do anything on its own, so this is an easy mulligan. Okay, we can keep this one. Uh, one of these cards has got to go. It's probably going to be this Arcan of Cruelty, I would say. I like the Arcan of Cruelty still in the deck. It's like a big thing to go over the top with when we sort of end up in a board stall. Dragon's Raised Channeler, sure. And a bauble. How many types are they going to have in their graveyard? Three types. Okay, understood. So we have a choice here in terms of what we do on turn one. I think we are Dark Witching something out. But I'm not sure what that something is going to be. It's a fairy time raveler. So we can try and hit this and take a card out of their hand. If we want to. I think that's where we get. We're going to lead out on a scrub land here. Let's try this dark ritual. Uh, so we'd like to take a card out of their hand and hit their guy. And I think we're going to discard the Teferi here. A Hydroblast and then a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so the reason we played this land out um, into... Wasteland is because we'd rather keep the one that gets us blue mana in case we draw a pond to try and fix our draws after that. The other option we had there was playing the Doughty Void Walker. Alright, so we're going to lose this. And then we're going to get a Delver into play on our opponent's side of the board. Sure. Now we are quite far behind. But we've certainly got a bunch of draws that can help us get back in there. This one could be one of them. If we get another mana source, we can drop a Baleful Strix. Or we can drop a Timeless Dragon. Let's see what our opponent reveals. They did not reveal anything. Okay, is that a land or a creature? So we can play the Timeless Dragon. Same art as this one. It is, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we can cycle the Timeless Dragon to get a third land. That kind of insulates us against the Wasteland. Because we're only taking one here. That's not so bad. Now that does depend on us drawing a second land here. A Dragon's Rose Channel was their draw. Okay, understood opponent. A Brainstorm. Like, we need to find a land... So I guess we're casting this Brainstorm. I don't like it, but we don't really have any other choice. Uh, a Tundra and a Ponder. So we're going to put back this Arcan of Cruelty, I guess. And this Void Voidwalker. And play this. The time for Void Voidwalker is gone, I think. We need the thing that gets us land. And we need the Timeless Dragon. And, and the thing that can block an attack. Any order... Shuffle and draw a land. We did not draw a land. Okay. So our, our plan now is to draw a land and cast the Baleful Strix. We're expecting the Wasteland to hit probably our white source because that's the good removal colour. A Pyroblast. Okay, so we can't cast our Baleful Strix into that now. Yeah, I don't know how we win this game. I think we're just too far behind the tempo. Despite casting a Dark Ritual on turn one. We would have been alright if we'd have played the Doughty Voidwalk as it turns out. Oh, you live and learn. So if we cast a Brainstorm here, it's probably getting Pyroblasted. But we can give it a go. I didn't Pyroblast it. Wowzers. Um, two Dathy Voidwalkers on top, I guess. We don't have any black mana right now. If our opponent has another Wasteland, we are 100% dead. But we can remove the Dragon's Race Channel next turn. Unless our opponent's drawn a Daze or something like that. But this puts us to six. We kill this. Then we go to three. Then we kill the Delver. So not looking great for us. I think we kill it in our opponent's drost, in their opponent's upkeep. In case they have something like a... Because they've got their mana open anyway. But they might have something like a Force of Negation. Alright. Can we kill your guy? No. Okay, we're done. Alrighty then. Begin sideboarding. So these wastelands are absolutely kicking us. Are we supposed to board in another land just to help that? It's certainly a thought, isn't it? Like we are quite weak to Wasteland because we're trying to kill our own lands of Lake of the Dead anyway. Do we just want another mana source? Because like all of our top end stuff doesn't really help us. I think we just resubmit though. 
Like this Caracas doesn't have anything other than being another mana source and it doesn't help us cast our like big thing that we're trying to pay off with. I think maybe if we're boarding in these intuitions, we don't really want this Arcan of Cruelty stuff, but this is kind of how we go over the top. Maybe it's the, we change that for one of those. So we've still got these Arcan of Cruelties we can cast off Lake of the Dead. Yeah, we'll try it like this. Like we've got brainstorms, we can always shuffle them away. Let's see a bunch of lands. Um, three uncastable spells. I think we do have to mulligan this one. All right, this is the hand I would like to keep. What are we getting rid of here is the next question. Um, I think it's a brainstorm. We just want to make sure that we can keep making our land drops because we need to go up the curve quite a lot. So we'll gauge what the correct play is based on what our opponent. If our opponent doesn't make a threat this turn, that's pretty nice. So do make a threat. I think we are maybe obliged to kill this before it gives them all the filtering that they could possibly want. Uh, let's try this. We can get a basic swamp here for now. Uh, target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Would I like to pitch a land to thought seize them here? I don't think we're getting rid of a brainstorm. No, I think we're just trying to kill this. They can daze this, which would be bad for us, but it will set them back a mana, which means they can't wasteland and deploy a threat or something next turn. Force of will pitching Merktide. All right. So I'm glad we didn't pitch multiple cards to this collective brutality. Feels like a good way of getting blown out there. Let's see what they surveil. A land, sure. So we don't want our opponent to play a waste stand. Our opponent doesn't have a daze because they would probably cast a daze over the force of will if they had it. There's a wasteland, sure. Goodbye, underground sea. Very much one of the weaknesses of our deck. There's a delver, sure. Opponent's down to three cards in hand. They didn't have a daze last turn, so I think we're going to play this Baleful Strix out into a potential daze. I don't think we have the luxury of waiting around here. So blue, black. All right, we're in. And we've got another land. So next turn we can brainstorm and fetch and fetch stuff away. We're in an okay spot. We do have this weird choice of whether or not we trade with the channeler or we hold it back to try and kill a Merc Tide. Delver not flipping means they have a land or a creature. There's a wasteland. Okay. Sure. Do they attack into our Baleful Strix here? They do. I think we do take this block here. And another Delver. Sure. Wish we had that engineering explosives kicking around now. So we can definitely cast some big cool stuff soon. So we can cast a six drop next turn. Well, we can cast an eight drop actually, right? Because we've got the Dark Richard as well. They did not flip the Delvers again. Interesting. I think end of turn we will fire off a brainstorm just so we have the maximum velocity for our turn here. Graph Tigger's Cage. Um, okay, that stops our demigods of revenge. Interesting. Let's play a brainstorm. Void Rend. And these extra Lake of the Dead. So put the Lake of the Dead and the Void Rend back. We'll draw the Void Rend. And we'll shuffle it away. So we can kill one of these Delvers if we need to. And they can't counter that. I think we might be forced to. We'll see what this Delver reveals, if anything. No reveal. I say they're cracking. So that the next one's got another chance of revealing something. Brainstorm. So we can save ourselves some damage here. So then we get Scrubland here. I think we do kill this. I think if they've got a Merc Tide here, then we're obviously in trouble. But they only have one instant or sorcery in their graveyard right now. So it won't be the biggest Merc Tide. And this is hitting us for three now. And it would hit us for three for the next turn. Okay, they didn't have anything. A Dark Ritual. Like, we can definitely cast some big stuff. We need to find some big stuff. If we can get an Arcan of Cruelty, we can just cast that. Because we've got four mana. Play Lake of the Dead is another four. Or we can just dart ritual it out. So we can play it around days. <clears throat> so we'll see. How's... This is an end of turn brainstorm from our opponent, which I don't like very much. Unless they have a Merc Titan hand and they just want to make it a little bit bigger on their turn. And they don't have another land. Like, I guess that's fine. Oh, I guess they're setting up their Devil's Secrets as well, actually. That makes sense too. Force of Will. Okay, understood opponent. We're not resolving anything cool. Sure. We're on a four turn clock from this Delver. Obviously, a lightning bolt changes that. Chandler. Okay, that changes the clock. There's only a 1 1 right now. Douthy Voidwalker. This will stop the Chandler becoming delirious, but I suspect what's most likely to happen is this just gets removed from the game pretty quickly. Force of Will pitching Spell Pierce. So that's them hellbent to get rid of this Douthy Voidwalker, which means if we can draw an Arcan of Cruelty, we can just win the game. 
because that's pretty much the text on Arcan of Cruelty. All right, we're going to take potentially six damage this turn. If our opponent finds a Lightning Bolt, they Lightning Bolt us, and they mill over the last card type they need, and we die. But we pretty much need to hit the Arcan of Cruelty this turn. Lake of the Dead. <clears throat> now, it's technically not dead here. So I guess we hope that our opponent doesn't flip, and then next turn we get an Arcan of Cruelty. Like, a lot of stuff loses us the game here. What are they missing? Uh, sorcery. So a Ponder kills us here. Yikes. Or a Mistress Bauble. Oh, they had neither. That's good news for us. Like, not great news. Like, we're, we're dead on board on the next turn, but a Flood is drowned. Now is the time to shine, deck. To Fairy. Um, this does stuff. Potentially. Let's cast that ritual just so we've got lots of mana to play with. And maybe bait something out. So we've got blue on this, white on this. No, that's wrong. We need to save white mana for source to plowshares, here, don't we? So it needs to be blue and white. We'll cast this. Oh, they had a lightning bolt for our face. Sure. Oh, well, we ran it close, but both games we just got beaten by Wasteland and it just set us back. And in this one, we just... We did get set back by Wasteland, but then we just didn't draw anything. All right, let's go on to the next round. We're on the play for round two. Uh, we're a little bit all in on this this here underground sea. I think we keep and we play the underground sea with the intention of brainstorming with it. We'll wait till our opponent's turn because it's not really going to make any difference to the rest of our turn here. We have two dark rituals, which is uh, a lot. Once upon a time, okay. So we're looking at maybe elves or initiative. Those are the most common once upon a time decks at the moment. Wooded Foothills. Doesn't really tell us much about what they're doing. Snow Covered Forest. That's also not a lot of information. Crow Mox. Okay, we're looking more towards initiative. So they floop out a load of cards here to pay for one thing. We can just force a will that and kind of blunt what they're doing. Magus of the Moon. Not a big fan of Magus of the Moon. I will cast this Brainstorm first. Okay, so there's the lands we wanted. So that's nice. Um, one of these cards we won't get back. Kind of want the intuition. I guess we don't need the second art ritual, do we? Put this on top and this on top. And then we will get rid of your Magus of the Moon. So we'll play out our Marsh Flats because it can go and get us a different colored mana source if we need it. So we'll play this one out. And we hope they don't have another Magus because then we can intuition and then attack them for 15 with Demigods of Revenge the turn after. Which is cool and the whole thing that we want to do here. So red, red. Chalice of the Void for one. Sure. Like, it's annoying, but... Uh, so we know the top card of our library is a Dark Ritual that we definitely don't want, so we'll crack this. We'll go and get ourselves a Swamp, just in case we need to play around Blood Moon later on. And then we'll play this Scrub Lat. So we can't just do the Demigod thing now, so we're probably just going to play out this Baleful Strix first. Because we're going to need some more mana because our Dark Ritual's turned off here. Okay, we'll play out this Blue Delta because we can go and find a Basic if that's the thing we need. We have a creature, so if they're playing an initiative creature, we can get the initiative back, or we can block their initiative creature with a death touch guy. Gives us options. It's a lot of mana. A fury. Yeah, sure. That's pretty good. We're going to lose our Baleful Strix here. So we would like to draw another land. A currency converter. That is not a land. I think we're playing a scrub land. I think we just do the demigod plan and hope it gets there, and we draw a land. Not amazing. We're going to keep this currency converter in hand in case we want to Cycle it through a currency converter later. A Minsk and Boo. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're going to take 10 this turn. But we should have lethal if we find a land. So it's going to look really cool if we do. And really bad if we don't find a land here. Sure. So we get one of these demigods of revenge. If we draw a land, we get to deal 15 damage to our opponent and kill them. Can we live the dream? It's not really the dream right there, is it? Um... Now what is the question? We can't play a currency converter because of Chalice of the Void. We can draw and discard a card. I guess that's what we're doing. We did not hit the land. Oh, there it is. Ah, that's a real tilter. Oh, yeah, nothing we could do here. We're just dead. Oh, we just needed to draw a land and we win the game. Very upsetting. Okay, so our opponent's deck. They've got a Minsk and Boo. I'd like to Caracas. I'd also like these removal spells. 
We do need to keep our force of wheels in, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, Teferi, not actually that great in this matchup, in my opinion. They're not trying to fight us on the stack. Um, Dark Ritual is kind of useful, but also like a massive liability in this matchup. I think we're off Dark Ritual, which gives us one more slot to cut, which is probably going to be a currency converter. Would we like to try and fit some Force of Negations in to stop things like Chalice? I think we would like an Engineer Explosives, actually. Uh, maybe we'll trim... I think it's just another Currency Converter here. Or oh, actually, no, these Collective Brutalities are pretty bad, right? So let's have a Currency Converter back and a Force of Negation. Let's try that. So we have the awkward thing about our deck that it really doesn't like to see Blood Moons. Okay, Leyline in the Void. So if we crack this... For a blue source, we can ponder, then we can Baleful Strix. We get pretty caught up by Omegas of the Moon, though. I don't really think we're... Like, we could have just kept this as a basic. But I don't think we win that game. Okay, so we've got a basic there, which is quite nice. Oh, I accidentally clicked that one. Okay, I guess Void Ren is the bottom card. Probably would be the bottom card anyway. Uh, I guess we put Planes on top and then the ponder. And we will not shuffle our library. The planes means that we have... Source to plowshares through a Blood Moon, so we can kill the Magus. Once upon a time, let's see what they find. A Cavern of Souls with their finds. Probably going to name Human, I would imagine. There it is. Spirit Guide. Another Spirit Guide. This looks like a Magus to me. Yeah, so we've got his planes on top of our library, so this doesn't really bother us. Goodbye. And we'll cast a Ponder. Intuition. Void Rend. So we can Void Rend into an Intuition, right? Get rid of this and then do some intuition shenanigans. Like another Blood Moon is obviously very bad for us. But if that happens, we can cycle we can cycle the Timeless Dragon so we're not drawing these dead cards. There's probably a chalice for one. Yeah. Time for that being good is gone. So we can hold up the Void Rend. Uh, intuition isn't exceptional right now. But next turn we can cycle Timeless Dragon and cast a Bell for Strix. So I think we probably want this intuition on top of our library because we can use that to get Lake of the Dead to just cast all our stuff. Let's see what our opponent makes this turn though. We can intuition for Force of Wills if something really bad happens, but I'd rather not do that. Magus of the Moon. Uh, I guess we go white, black, blue. This resolves. We get rid of it. So we've got another intuition on top of our library. I don't think we want that anymore. Do we just want to cycle this for a planes and not get any value? I think we do. And we also use these two. And I guess we're on Tundra here. Like we've already got one thing that doesn't cast it here. Uh, okay, so we want black and blue. Draw a card. Force of Will. Okay, so we have Force of Will Intuition. And we're looking for Urborg. Would be great. Okay, our opponent's got nothing over there. Arcan of Cruelty. Okay. So we can just intuition for three Lake of the Dead and just start hard casting Arcan of Cruelty. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That seems pretty good. Or we can hold this force of will, but I think we're just doing blue. One. Can I please have Lake of Dead? A Bell for Strix is a great draw. So we get black, black, white, white. Play Lake of the Dead. We will sacrifice probably our Scrubland. And then we sacrifice our underground sea. And we cast this. Alright, that's enough for a concession. That is what it says on the card, right? You win the game. So, on the play, are we more inclined to have Force of Negation? Oh, sorry, on the draw, are we more likely to want Force of Negation? I think so. I'm not sure this from the Catacombs is really where we want to be. But it does just give us the a really nice intuition line. We'll trim a currency converter for that. Although a currency converter can fill back our mana if something goes wrong. So I guess we'll take a ponder instead for this. Like we could have these to ferries because we can go and get the planes, go and get the island. But then if we're doing that, we're probably going to have a swamp anyway. And the planes is enough to kill Omegas anyway. I think we'll just submit like this. If we lose to Omegas, we lose to Omegas. All right. This seems pretty good. This kills our opponent on turn five, which is obviously very slow. But that changes dramatically with other draws. Like Lake of the Dead, this kills on turn four, which isn't that much of an increase, is it really? Our opponent's mulligan to five, so our force of will is looking good here. 
We just want to sort of play a load of black sources, cast Demigod of Revenge, beat down with it. Let's see what our opponent starts the game with. Ancient Tomb, no play. Understood. We're going to draw here. Another blue card. Okay, that's good. Uh, I don't really want to go and fetch an island here. Ponder. Force of Negation, Demigod of Revenge. We don't really want this Demigod of Revenge, so we'll put this on the bottom, I think. And then the Void Rend, and then the Force of Negation, and we'll draw this. Then we'll draw the Void Rend next turn, which is another blue card. And then we're just trying to make land drops at this point until we can just do some Demigod-type shenanigans. Right, so this is going to be an uncountable Magus, which is potentially a problem for us. Oh no, it's something bigger. This looks like a Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Yep, can't count on that one. We do have a Void Rend coming in a couple of turns, but there's no point casting the Void Rend when we can just cast Demigod of Revenge. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we might have to Void Rend this, looking at how the turns are going to play out. So draw the Void Rend. We have another Demigod on top of our library, which we don't want. Do you want to put back any of these things? Um, I think we want to Brainstorm here, in case we find exactly Source to Plowshares. We did not find exactly source to plash yet. So we'll put back this Demigod Revenge. This Belfast Strix is nice though, so I'll definitely keep that one. How useful are these Force of Worlds going to be? I don't really know. Two lands here. I guess we can put the Force of Will on top. We're kind of pitching Force of Negation to Force of Will as our plan, really, isn't it? Um, we can put both Demigods on top, because if we're intuitioning for them, they're going to... We're going to get one in hand anyway. So we're going to take... A bunch this turn. Okay, they're going down the scry route, so that's okay for us. They do get to effectively draw a card of Caves of Chaos Adventure, though. It's going to be tough for us to win this game, I think. That cavern has uh, done some work. Simmons Spirit Guide, being the card they flipped, is pretty good for us. Because they can't use it for mana from the Exile Zone, and it's not really something they can cast right now. Chalice of the Void for one. Do we care about Chalice for one? Uh, it stops Swords to Plowshares being a good draw, but that's not what this game is about right now. I think that's fine. So we want to go and get ourselves a Scrubland. And then it's our turn. Okay, so we've got more removal and all sorts of that sort of stuff. So we can't just make the demigods. So I think we are we're either Void Rending or casting Baleful Strix this turn. Tough choice. I think it's probably the Void Rend that's the safest play. Sure, so get a treasure here so they can actually deploy something else. We want to do this before they go to combat so they don't get the free card out of it. So I think this one gets us a basic swamp here. And then we'll avoid rain there. So black, white, blue. Goodbye. They could drop a Megas here and just bury us, but... Oh, Chromox. This is going to use two of their resources to make this. That's pretty good for us. Just a spirit guide. Okay. Just two mana. Is this going to be a once upon a time? Three mana. Four mana. Under Mountain Adventurer. We can counterspell this one, and I think we will. All right. So our opponent is hellbent now. So we can just do the demigod thing next turn. So that's the thing we want to do. It attacks the same time as the Strix, so I guess that's probably the best play here, is to just uh, demigod our opponents out. It means if our opponent taps this uh, ancient tomb, they lose the game. Okay. Under Mountain Adventurer. This will put them into... Uh, Throne of the Dead 3. But I don't think that matters because we're going to attack them for 15 next turn. Let's see what they reveal here. Uh, Magus of the Moon is a real problem, actually. Yep, okay. Maybe we're supposed to float mana in response to that. Shucks. I think we just lost this game on that one. Oh, God, our deck is so bad against Magus of the Moon. Um... If we'd have played that Baleful Strix last turn, we would have drawn this Force of Will so we could hit the Undermount Adventurer. Yeah, that's the one thing that kills us there, isn't it? So we got to take in 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, exactly. Ah, oh, tough. It was exactly that, because if we... If they have um, Caves of Chaos Adventurer, we can't counter it. Oh, dear. We couldn't float to kill the Magus either. And if we cast Intuition there... What are we getting that actually digs us out of that hole? I don't think there's anything we can do on that front. Yeah, the actual play for us was to stop this Undermountain Adventure coming into play. As it turns out, so we should have just strixed. Oh, annoying. Let's go to the next round. Alright, I want to play for round three. 
We keep coming close, but not quite getting there. So uh, we're going to mulligan this hand. Uh, like we only need to find one more land here, right? And then we can times dragon up into more mana. I, th I think we... Mm, we're on the play as well. I think we mulligan again. Uh, any land is pretty good. Guess I'll reluctantly keep this one. I'm not convinced about this one. Two of these cards have got to go. I think we can get rid of these things. Probably can't get rid of this. Maybe it's Brainstorm and Demigod. We'll allow the intuition to find it for us later. Sure. I do not like this hand. But I think the way our deck functions, we need a critical resource, a cri critical mass of resources, because we need to hit all of our land drops. And we need to have the intuition. Like, we just need to find a blue land. Okay, we're dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. This is oops or spells. We just get to F6 here and die. Yep. And the City Informer, sure. Let's see your build of this deck, please. Uh, I'm Spirit Guide. One Memory's Journey. We're mainly looking here for the... Uh, I know this card's in a real zone. Uh, we're mainly looking for the reanimate, whether that's in the deck or not. They did present a 60-card deck, so that usually means no reanimate. I'm just making super duper sure. Sure. All right. Uh, we are done. Shouldn't have postured too much on sideboarding, it didn't really matter. So, Pact of Negation is good here. This Disruption is good here. Things that take a long time to work are bad here. We're just trying to win the game, uh, to stop our opponent winning the game. We don't need anything that isn't blue either. The Dark Ritual is good because they can let us play our Delphi Voidwalk on turn one. Uh, how good is Teferi here? I don't think Teferi is that good. But it's a blue card, so I guess we're inclined to keep it. Collective Brutality messes with our opponent's hand. Baleful Strix is a blue card. Probably the Timeless Dragon here. Timeless Dragon is a relatively quick clock. It's either that or Teferi that goes. I think Teferi stays just purely because it's a blue card. Uh, we can play an Explosives just to hit any mana they play out. I don't hate that as a plan either. Well, it means we have to cut something. I guess we'll cut one of the demigods. We don't need four demigods, do we? All right. This is our plan. Counter spells, removal. Okay, so this is like the nuts hand. We'll keep this. We have Dark Ritual into Thoughtseize, Dalsy Voidwalker. That seems seems good. Our opponent's multi five. I suspect our opening here wins the game for us. Our opponent doesn't really know what we're playing either. So they're not going to expect, expect counter spells in game three if we can avoid showing them. So we're going to lead off on the Swamp. Dark Ritual. Thoughts the... Uh, um, can't stuff first. We'll play this guy first. Then we'll Thoughts Dark opponent. This way, the thing we get goes into the Void. Okay, so they're scooping that up there. All right. So they're going to think we're not a blue deck. So we might just be able to get them with counter spells because they're going to board around permanence. So I think we're in a pretty nice spot here because our opponent didn't get to see very much. Which is my one concern when I've played Oops or Spells. If you knew what your opponent was playing before you went to game two, you'd often win a lot more. Is one Force of Will good enough? Our opponent's mulligan to six cards. Is a Force of Will good enough? We have a Brainstorm to find more stuff. I think we'll keep this. Line of Sanctity. Sure. So this is to protect them from discard spells. Hopefully they've boarded out their Thoughtsies. Oh, this is an issue for us. We're going to lose our force of will here. But we do have a brainstorm to try and find more stuff. They're unlikely to be able to go here either. So they've just got some protection pieces. They're going to need some more mana, I suspect. They could just have Dark Ritual and be away with the away with it next turn. So we'll play out this Polluted Delta. And we'll pass. We can brainstorm in their turn if we need to. If they're doing force of will shenanigans, we don't really want that to happen to us. That's not that I have thoughts of shenanigans. We would like to brainstorm in our turn so we get to see the maximum amount of cards here. Okay, so we found a force of negation. That's good. Let's crack this for underground C. And then let's crack this for Grubland. Then we'll go black, blue. So this draws us a card. Okay, we've got Thought Seize that doesn't do anything. Our opponent's probably confused. That's why we did that instead of Brainstorm. So they might think that we have found a force of will here. Now this doesn't hit their things. So this is a Summoner's Pact. So this will give them a green mana. I think the problem here is, if we counterspell this, and they just have Spirit Guides, they can just play all their stuff out with Spirit Guides. And we just let this go. So there's a Spirit Guide. 
Balustrade Spy. Yep, I think we lose here. Maybe we should have hit that Summoner's Pact. Opponent still has one card in hand here. Yeah, we were kind of hoping to hit a Dark Ritual. Maybe we're supposed to hit that Summoner's Pact there. Maybe I'm getting greedy because I was like, oh, if, if I can hit the next thing, they'll just lose. Surely they're not going to have three Simeon Spirit Guides. I was hoping they'd have some sort of artifact mana. Uh, they're going to target us. How many Cabal Therapies they have is the question. So they're going to name Force of Will here. They might name Force of Negation because we didn't count on the Balustrade Spy. So yeah, they named the Force of Negation. Sure. We lose the game now. Oh, that's annoying. I think, like, if we hit that Summoner's Pact, they're still only one mana away from being able to combo off anyway. Um, that's, I was expecting them to have some sort of artifact mana, but maybe I should have, I gave my opponent not enough credit because I guess you play out the artifact mana first to see if that sticks before you cast the scary thing that can lose the game for you, which is Summoner's Pact. Yeah, we could have played that one better, but... Yeah, I'm annoyed with myself again. All right, let's go to the last uh, fourth round. Like this is a hand that does our thing that we're trying to do, but it does have this horrible planes in it. Um, I guess we try and keep it. Uh, a basic swamp, a thought seize. Sure, you can take a thing. It's probably going to be the intuition that goes here, but it might be the brainstorm. It's quite a weird looking hand. I'm not sure what they're going to make of it. Currency convert has gotten interesting. Okay, that's actually not so bad for us because we are kind of hoping that we can just do our thing in a few turns and we're trying to get rid of our planes via a brainstorm. So we could snap off a plane, we could snap off a brainstorm here to try and then find a fetch land and cast a Baleful Strix. So we really don't want this planes, but we'll take it if we have to. So let's try, let's try for a brainstorm in a turn. Okay, we didn't find necessarily what we wanted, but we've got some useful stuff. So put this on top and then we'll put the swamp and then we'll draw the swamp. Play our little owl. Here we go. So this will draw us our planes. And now we have, uh, next turn we can cast the intuition. Okay, so they've in tune for a deep analysis. Sure. I think we, I was tempted to counter spell that one. But I don't think our opponent necessarily just runs out like that with the open mana there. Okay, so there's a wasteland. Not a fan of that one. Are they casting deep analysis here? This is two mana and three life. They could use their wasteland for mana here. And not using their wasteland for mana. I think we just let them have the two cards. We're going to be using our force of will to force through our intuition, perhaps. Yep, that does set us back a little bit, which is unfortunate. And Urborg. What does that do for us? Doesn't really help, does it? And this planes is absolute abysmal in our deck like it was good once earlier because of megas of the moon but i think the mana base of this deck is not really where i would want to be building this deck thought seeds yeah i think we let this hit i think we're just losing we're either losing the force of will and the game or we're losing the intuition and playing for a bit longer but force of willing this isn't going to really change that i don't think all right i took the force of will we're not so our opponent feels like a dooms like the entombs day type deck Right, so we've got another land that doesn't actually do anything for us. That's always exciting. Uh, yeah, I guess we go to attacks. Our opponent's taken quite a lot of damage along the way. So a Doomsday could be a little bit scary for them because we can just go Demi got a Revenge, kill them if we draw one. Whether or not they know that's what we're doing, we'll see. Show and tell. Um, I guess we have to let this happen because we don't really have a choice otherwise. Let's draw a card. A Grizzlebrand, sure. So they can draw some more cards if they want to. Uh, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? An Intuition that we can't cast. That's an exciting one, isn't it? Hmm. No blue mana. It's certainly a bit of a kicking. Uh, I think we attack with our Baleful Strixies. Or maybe attack with one. I don't think they're going to trade their Grizzlebrand here. And then we will thought seize them or address them and then drain life. The drain life means that they can't use Grizzlebrand here. We're going to discard one of these. Probably, is it the Dark Ritual? Probably is the Dark Ritual here, actually. Let's try this Collective Brutality. They can go to, get to draw some cards here, but if they don't hit a counter spell, they will lose. So it's pretty high stakes. Oh, they're going for it. They've got to hit a, they've got to hit a counter spell here or they're dead. I hit a force of will. Okay. 
We can't crack their fetch land, which makes me not want to play our Urborg here to help them out. So I think we just pass the turn. Now they have to block with our with their Grizzlebrand. Right, I'm not going to say no to killing a Grizzlebrand. They will gain some life back. And they can probably do something with that. But we've got a Grizzlebrand off the board at least. A Wasteland. Our land doesn't do anything anyway, so I don't really care too much at the end of the day. Sure, take one of our intuitions. Right, so our opponent is on like in Tombsday Tinfins, which I played twice in the league the other day and now I'm seeing it again. Right, so we have an Underground Sea. That's helpful. Let's peck them for one more. And then their end step, we can get some Demigods of Revenge and try and kill our opponent. Counter spells will, on the intuition, will stop us, but counter spells and Demigod won't. I imagine this is going to get countered though. Blue, black, white. I go to four. This is just a hard cast force of will. Sure is. Okay, if we can just draw an actual demigod here. We can get him. A ponder. Let's have a look. Uh, okay, okay. I like I like what's cooking here. I think we go to ferry on bottom, then demigod, then this collective brutality. And we will do these modes again. And I think we discard our Urborg here. Shoulder of the Apocalypse, Grizzlebrand, all that fun stuff, eh? Sure. So we drain them for a little bit of damage here. Next turn, we just shoulder, uh, we um, demigod them into the bin using our Lake of the Dead. Seems good. Our opponent can draw a Force of Will here, but I imagine they're probably deploying a Shouldered here. Okay, there's an island, and here's probably a Shouldered. Sure. So this is going to put us. Well, they're, they're dead on board to the Belfast Strix. Uh, they're not dead on board to the Belfast Strix. They've just gained six life. Okay. Okay, just gaining another two life. Yikes. Okay, Demigod, you're going to have to do a little bit of work, I'm afraid. But I believe in you. We're going to be sacrificing some number of our swamps here, aren't we? We have to sacrifice both of them to get a Demigod into play, which means we then can't play the Teferi on top of our deck. So there's four... Five, six mana. Okay, so we're going to take two from the shoulder. We're pretty all in on this play, aren't we? Uh, I guess we'll get rid of this swamp. And then we'll sacrifice our other swamp. We'll cast this. So if we go to attacks here, we can deal our opponent six damage this turn and six damage next turn. And that's worth doing here. Because we'll put them to three and then they go up to five. One, two, three, four, five, six... If they've got something like a Dark Ritual, then we lose, because they just play the Grizzlebrand. I guess they can't pay to draw the cards. Uh, what is the top creature card of their graveyard? It's a Grizzlebrand. That's pretty bad for us. They get to draw their whole deck now. Yeah, that's game over. Yeah, so what they do here is they attack us for seven and four, and then they draw seven cards, but every card they draw, they gain two. So they gain one life per card they draw. So gain one life, draw a card is a bit too powerful for us to beat. So we want these things. The Caracas here looks like it's going to be pretty good. Um, the Force of Negation is certainly going to help. I don't think Plows is too bad either. We do not want our Archons of Cruelty because our opponent can just Thought Seize them and reanimate them and then we're going to feel incredibly sad. I think part of the problem is our core engine isn't very good, which is very much an issue, isn't it? Because how are we supposed to get all these, do this whole plan? I don't know. I like from the catacombs because we can hit our opponent's stuff. That appeals to me. But we need to find 10 cuts here, which is a ridiculous number of cuts. Um, this currency converter nonsense is a little bit too cute for me. We don't need all four demigods. We need to keep our disruption. Maybe we don't. Maybe we are just trimming down. The, we, like, we need to win the game somehow is the only problem. Uh, which I guess the time is dragons do. But intuition is a blue card as well. So it's really annoying trying to cut that. The Fairy Time Raveler is interesting. Maybe this goes, but again, it's a blue card. How are we supposed to cut that? Maybe we're just supposed to say we don't run these plows and if they get stuff into play, we just lose to it. That feels horrible, but maybe that's where we're going. At least the Fairy can bounce it. We still need to find three cards. We can swap out our planes for a Caracas. And then we got two more cuts to find. Tricky is it an intuition? Two intuitions? How many blue cards? We've got them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
plus 8, so 22, that's okay. I guess we'll do that. Yeah, I don't think this is going to go well. Okay, we can keep this, I suppose. Now, our opponent is probably on Transformational Doomsday Cyborg, if the other two decks I played the other day that looked the same as this is any indication. I've got this queued up to play on my channel at some point as well, so... Alright, let's do a ponder. Brainstorm, Collective Brutality. Like, Collective Brutality, just to keep going through their hand is quite nice. And we'll do Marsh Flats, Brutality, Brainstorm. So we'll draw the Brainstorm just so we've got more options for blue cards if we need them. And we're just going to try and dress our opponent a couple of times and hope that's good. We're probably pitching this to Ferry to the Force of Will because Teferi's not amazing in this matchup. Intomb. Okay, let's say no to this one. Let's collect the brutality of them, see if we can dress something good out of their hand. Uh, an Entomb and a Force of Will. We'll take the Entomb. We can come back for the Force of Will later if we want to. Top card of our library is a land, so we'll, we'll be drawing it rather than cycling Timeless Dragon. Okay, so we can take this Force of Will now if we want to. Don't want to take a Force of Will now. We can just put a 5-5 five five into play that they can't do anything about. I don't hate that as a strategy. Am I going to brainstorm first? Let's brainstorm in case we can replace this collective brutality with a thought suit or something. A Doughty Voidwalker, that's a good one. Uh, yes, I'll have that one. So we'll put this Timeless Dragon on top. And then the Scrubland or the Scrubland and the Timeless Dragon. Uh, let's do it this way around. Then we'll cast this using these as lands. Is this good enough for a thought see, uh, a force of will from our opponent? It might be. Force of will pitching a track, sir. Sure. So that's show and tell lines down for a little bit. So I need to find an enabler. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, so we're getting waste added. They might take our Urborg here, but we'll see. They did take the Urborg, sure. So here's the scrub line that we knew was coming. Let's dress our opponent to. I see we do need to do that. No, I think we time as dragon and just put a threat into play and try and end the game. Let's get a planes. A brainstorm in response. Interesting. This makes me more inclined to cast this collective brutality now. They can just hide things on top with brainstorm is the issue. Alright, they finished resolving their brainstorm. Now we get our scrubland. And that's over to us. Do I think our opponent has got good stuff in hand now or they put good stuff on top of their library? The Demigod of Revenge. I kind of just want to see what they're working with now. Maybe that's cowardly. Maybe we'll leave up to blue source, actually. Feels like they're trying to brainstorm and get something good. Brazen Borrower, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Okay. So, playing that Timeless Dragon into a Jace the Mind Sculptor would be pretty terrible. So I'm glad we didn't do that. What we can do is play a Demigod of Revenge and kill their mind, Jace the Mind Sculptor if that's what they play this turn. So they did crack their fetch, so I was right to have a look. But it's not quite direct the old Collective Brutality. Here's the Jace, I suspect. There we go. They could Fate Seal us and put a land on top. They're just going to Brainstorm, sure. We would very much like to draw a land. Last time we said that, we didn't and we lost the game, so... Okay, that is not a land. So we'll go black, blue, draw a card. Right, we're definitely running out of time here. Okay, it's exiled a Ponder with that. Sure, we still just need a land, but they can just hold open the Borrower now and use that to bounce our Demigod in combat. I don't know what they've shuffled away. So the Borrower might have gone, or they might be holding that back. We're getting another Brainstorm, or is it time to go upstairs? Nope, it's still Brainstorm time. This looks a little bit different to the deck I played against the other day that had an, in a Doomsday package. They're getting back our little Dragon. Sure. Not ideal. Black, blue. Let's have a Strix. Now we're getting buried by cards from the other side of the table right now. Okay, so we have the Marsh Flats. So we can cast Demigod of Revenge next turn. Let's see what they do here. They might like... Oh, yeah, they're just going to bounce that straight away. Interesting. They're going to Thought Seize us and we're going to lose the Baleful Strix or the Demigod. Probably the Demigod here. Although they can hold up the Borrower and just bounce it. So I think we've probably lost this one, team. I don't think... It's going to be very easy for us to find a match room with this deck, in all honesty. So I know if we play this, we're going to get hit by a Borrower. We can't actually play this, we don't have all the black sources we need, right? 
because the mana base on this deck is not good. Right, let's just get some underground seas. Let's cast this dragon. I imagine this gets brazen borrowed. Now we could cycle it for a demigod next turn, but putting this into play and putting demigod into play is kind of similar, to be honest. All it's doing is forcing the borrower out of their hand for a turn. And we're so far behind. All right, so we're gonna take four from the dragon. And we have a polluted delta now. Let's see if we can play a demigod of revenge. I think we've got one swamp left in our deck. Oh no, we've got more swamps shot. Let's cast this. Black, 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 black. They can hard cast a force of will here. She looks like exactly what's happening. Sure. Okay, so if we draw a Demigod of Revenge next turn, we might be able to win the game. They do still have a Brazen Borrower hanging out that they can use to block with. But we have a draw that maybe is okay for us. Wasteland. That's one of our swamps, so that's that draw gone. Let's take four of this this turn. And then what? Hmm. We did not draw a Demigod of Revenge. We can plane cycle this and then internalize it. They bounce it with Jason Mind Sculptor, we lose the game. There is no way out of this. We are just dead. Yeah, this deck not really uh, doing a lot for me today, I'm afraid. We've got one more round to go to try and dodge the 05. Yikes. Let's see if we can do it. Okay. We've got a Ponder. We've got Land Ponder into a couple of Strix. We've got a Intuition, which we can use to get into the game a bit more. Like, this has got to be a keep. We've got to get a win somewhere. Oh no, is this going to be Reanimator? That's going to be super bad for us. Okay, Ponder. So we do need lands to cast our little land. I guess we're just putting these all on top. Our opponent's going to go cast an Entomb. Oh, they didn't cast End of Turn Entomb. Maybe they're not Reanimator. Second land. Very suspicious from our opponent over there. I kind of want to see what our opponent's working with more than I want to bail for Strix. So I think we're going to target opponent reveals a hand. We might as well drain two because we're going to get all of our demigods back here. Black, black, and pitch this. Let's see what our opponent's working with. So on turn four, we can attack for 20. No, turn five. Galvanic relay. Okay. We know what our opponent's doing at least. We've taken all of their bits and pieces. So they don't have any payoff. So they've just got a load of mana. So maybe we can get there. Not a big fan of the old crack of the Bloodstained Mire though. An underground sea. This can be a Thought Seas or a Brainstorm. <sighs> Brainstorm's really strong here. Now they've got a lot of Mox Opals they don't really want. Well, they might want them. They're just Lotus Petals effectively. But they get to turn them into actual business spells here. There's a Plateau. There's a Lotus Petal. There's a Lion's Eye Diamond. They're going to have kept one Mox Opal. We don't know how many more they're going to have kept on top of that. Right, it's happened for red. I'm playing another Mox Opal, sure. Which means this one is probably gone into a business spell here. Another Mox Opal, sure. This is a Galvanic Relay for a bunch. The Ad Nauseam being there is means they can cast that next turn, doesn't it? Um, it's just the Ad Nauseam, though. So what we can do is we can Intuition for... Um, we can Intuition for Force of Will and then counter the Ad Nauseam. That's probably our best bet here. It's a shame we don't get to do our cool thing, but we get to win the... Well, not necessarily win the game. We get to play the game for a bit longer. Now, our opponent's got one card in hand. We hope that isn't a business spell. So there's a Mox Opal. There's a Rat Flame. There's another Rat Flame. There's that Ritual. There's that Ritual. We can play the Chrome Mox out here. Please imprint something. They're casting our nauseam in response. This is so they can get a card off of it. Intuition. Here's just a force of wills, isn't it? Here, yeah. One, two. Feels like our opponent might have a Galvanic Relay as well, which would be a pretty good hit for them, because that'd be their third relay. And it was just a land. Okay. All right. Um, we have this intuition. We need to find a land if we want to kill our opponent next turn. I think it's worth trying to close the game out that quickly. So we'll play this out. And then pass a turn, and we'll intuition for some demigods. And we just need to find a mana source. And then we can kill our opponent doing the thing. Our opponent doesn't have that many great draws here. Uh, blue, blue, white. 
Let's say done. I get one of these demigods. We just need to draw a land. Our opponent could scoop. Can we do the thing? Oh my god, we get to do the thing. One time we get to do the thing. Oh, they conceded. We were going to do the thing. All right. That's game one for us. That's a pretty good sign. So, Thoughtseize is going to be good here. Force of Negation is going to be good here. Um, Arcan of Cruelty is kind of okay. But again, we're just trying to cast five drops here, and that doesn't feel very helpful. Um, currency Converter. Is that something we're interested in here? I don't think it's good. I think it's very dirtly. Um, Teferi is pretty blank here. So those can go... I like Explosives because if they play any of their mana out, which this deck often does, we can snag them. We also want to keep the Dark Ritual so we can Dark Ritual out, like Thoughtseize Collective Brutality. Do want Dante Voidwalker just as a threat that we can Turbo out. That's probably going to be better than these guys. Uh, we're still looking for one more card to, for the Explosives, aren't we? Um, this is a threat. These are blue cards. We can probably drop one of our Demigods. Right, this is our plan. The explosives also kills goblins. Urgh, this hand, though. If we have an island on top of our library, or something that can get a blue source, then, I'm, then this hand's great. But I don't think we can keep this. I think we have to mulligan. Sure, we can keep this. And I think we just get rid of one of these marsh flats for now. There's a lotus petal. There's a bauble. There's a bauble. There's a Brainstorm. Dice Void Walker can stop the Echo of Eons line, which they can take. But it's not very effective against this deck. But it is a guy that we can apply pressure with early on. And maybe we can spike some interesting things from their graveyard. Things like Silence, which our opponent plays. Because this is the Epic Storm. There's a Chrome Mox. There's a Mox Opal. What am I missing here? I was just playing stuff out, but they don't have any payoffs. Wish Claw Talisman, that's their payoff, isn't it? Um, we will hit this. Pitching. Hmm. I think it's the intuition here, and we just hope to draw a blue card with the Force of Will. Sure. So they're going to have some redraws off their bubbles. Place Underground, see out and pass. Yep, so they get to see our next draw as well as the one we drew for that turn. So they're going to have pretty solid information about what we're working with. And they got two bauble triggers incoming, so they're going to draw three cards this turn. So they could do a small relay, but they're probably just going to build up for a little bit unless they can jam a, an ad nauseum straight away. The top card of our library is not Engineering Explosives, because they wouldn't play out the Lion's Eye Diamond if that was the case. We found a blue card, that's something. Uh, we'll crack this for a Scrubland, and we'll make a threat. Again, Graveyard Hate isn't very effective against these. It shuts down one line, but usually they're going to be they're an ad nauseum or a Peer Through Depths deck anyway, or a Galvanic Relay deck or whatever. They don't really need... Um, sorry, Peer Into the Abyss, not Peer Through Depths. Um, yeah, so they're not really a deck that cares about their graveyard. We can shut down one line and apply pressure though, so that's something. Thought Seize. All right, we're going to lose our Force of Will here. We lost the Intuition. I guess that represents, like, anything potentially, so... Um... Our opponent has put a thought season in their graveyard for us to potentially use. I think we will attack though. Their life total getting lower is good to get around um, ad nauseums. We're gonna oh, we're gonna cycle this guy. We don't want to show our opponent the island, and we will have a scrub land here. And we'll play the scrub land and hold up force of will blue card or at least something that looks like that. Next turn, we can thought seize our opponent with our Dathy Voidwalker, if we want to. Okay, I don't think we need to do that now. I think we just go to attacks, send in the clown, make a massive threat, pass turn. So this is a two-turn clock now. Opponent's only got two cards in hand, so a Galvanic Relay isn't something to worry about. It's just a case of whether or not they can add Nauseam or Burning Wish into Peer into the Abyss. That certainly helps on that front. This would be a wonderful turn to draw Engine Explosives. Did not draw engine explosives. We can hard cast Force of Will now, though. So Thoughtseize doesn't stop us. Silence does. We've seen the plateaus. They are on the Silence build. We dodged the 05. We got a win. Okay. Whew. Yikes. All right. Let's have a little chat about how the actual league went quickly. So if you can look here, we got a 1-2, a 1-2, a 1-2. So one of those 
was against the initiative deck where if we drew a land on that turn, we win the game. We didn't draw the land, we lost the game. So that was on quite a, a fine margin. The Upsal spells, we could have countered the Summoner's Pact, and that would have bought us one or more turns. We were holding it in case they had any artifact mana or something like that. Probably a misplay. Uh, so we maybe could have turned these two around in slightly different circumstances. But that's about it. Let's chat about the deck. So this deck is interesting to me, but I have a concern with the white cards in this deck because Teferi Time Rather is obviously very good and lets us do our thing. And Time is Dragon is a nice way of trying to get up to mana to do this. And it combos quite nicely with Currency Converter. But that's about it. And we're kind of punking our mana base in order to fit this in. So we need Swamps to sacrifice to Lake of the Dead. And we need Black or Red Pips from our lands to cast Demigod of Revenge. And then we're also trying to cast all these one-drop Brainstorm Ponder things, as well as the Blue Man on these. Obviously, like, getting an Underground Sea on turn 3 for Intuition isn't a problem. So our mana base is kind of really clunky because of it. So we've got these white sources here, including a Plains that was good in one game, but in other games meant that we couldn't cast a Demigod of Revenge. So that didn't feel great to me. Also, the From the Catacombs plan never really came up. Now, obviously, it's just a, a different intuition pile you can do there. And that one is pretty good if, you know, you, you're not trying to put Demigods into play and you just want the Ark of Cruelty. But again, you need to have a certain mass of cards in your graveyard how many is this this is five escape five so it's kind of like the same as Uro, i think so it's quite a lot of cards that need to be in your graveyard we have a lot of fetch lands which help with that but it feels like lake of the dead is trying to do a lot of the heavy lifting and fit this deck together because part of the problem is we're trying to cast a five mana spell to win the game with and the five mana spell we're casting doesn't win the game on its own we have to cast intuition and then cast a five mana spell that feels like a lot of hoops to jump through for something that isn't even that good. Like, it can attack for a maximum of 15. Now, we could have something like Emrakul just off of a 2 and a blue spell, which is way more powerful than doing this. So, whilst this is kind of a cool, fun thing to do and reminds me of back in the day when I used to play Standard, I'm not necessarily sure how viable it is. Obviously, we've got one Urborg. So, if you're going to have these basics in your deck, you probably want more Urborgs. You can always sacrifice the Urborg itself because it is a swamp once it's in play to a Lake of the Dead. Uh, we've got Currency Converters to bin them off. I'm not even sure how good the Currency Converter here is either. It's just trying to get these Demigods of Revenge gone. And the Collective Brutality to put these Demigods in the bin. We're playing a bad card, right? Collective Brutality is not a good Magic the Gathering card. Like, it's fine, but it's it's so rare that you ever play it and go, oh, that, that was really good. It was like, this is... I'm playing it because I feel I have to play it is kind of my approach to protective brutality sometimes. I'd rather just have better cards. Like a Thought Seize is just so much better than this or a removal spell if that's what you want and you're not really wanting the drain life effect. I don't think we necessarily have that many good things to be discarding to it. Like it's fine with Currency Converter. You get a little bit of value there. But again, Currency Converter is a card that I don't think is that good. It's fine. I certainly bought a set when they came out because it's a cool card. I really like what it does. I don't think it's that powerful. I think if you're running a Shark Still type list, you can maybe get away with it. Or having it as a as a Saga target that you can tutor for, that's fine. But I don't really think it's doing that much here. Like we can use it to discard lands to get treasures to play around Blood Moon. Which means if we've got these currency converters, we should just have less basics, right? So that we can cast our black, 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 black black spell so maybe if we were to get rid of some of our basics and rely more on the currency convert for that that might be a plan i don't think we can be having three basics in this deck though that's trying to cast demigod of revenge unless you swap the colors out so you could swap your white cards for red cards now i haven't had a good think of what those red cards could be necessarily but instead of currency converter you could run faith is looting that's a pretty good card and it means that it would open you up to some other lines with doing this sort of stuff instead, maybe. I just think the intrinsic basis of this deck isn't very strong. Now, the list that was sent to me was one that did 5 over league. So clearly, when the pieces fall right, you can get there. But it doesn't feel like our interaction is very good. It doesn't feel like our reliability of casting Demi God of Revenge is very good. It doesn't feel like our backup plan is very good either. It feels like you have to thread a lot of needles to make this work. 
when you could be playing something like the the Phoenix deck, the Grixis Phoenix deck, which, yes, Arc Light Phoenixes are a lot weaker than Demigod of Revenge, but they're a lot easier to recur than Demigod of Revenge. And you can just go Buried Alive and then Bash for 9 on turn 1. The earliest we're really doing it, like, I guess we could do turn 2 Intuition, turn 3 Demigod of Revenge if we've got two Dark Rituals. But realistically speaking, we're not doing our thing until turn 4 most of the time. So... Doing that on turn four just feels incredibly slow for this format. And I'm not really sure that's where we want to be. I think this sort of stuff, like Arkham Cruelty, is almost a liability in a lot of ways because people are just going to thought seize you and reanimate it. A lot of decks just run a reanimate in these days as well. Like a lot of thought seize decks, if they've got creatures of their own, they'll probably run one reanimate. Like you see it quite often in even the Death Shadow builds that don't have grief in, they still sometimes run a reanimate. There's a lot of ways they can go wrong for you. So I'm not convinced this is a deck that I particularly want to play again. Although I did really, I do like Demigod of Revenge. I think it's a cool card. I'm just not sure how we're going about doing this is right. Maybe there's a black red build. Uh, I can't really think of what that would be right now. I guess you could do Buried Alive type stuff. But you kind of need the intuition to get two of them in. But best case scenario, you're only bashing for 15. So it still just feels underwhelming to be honest sideboard wise the Dalthy void walkers are okay but if they were like ley lines we'd have been in much better shape it's just we're using these as graveyard hate and beaters because our a plan isn't necessarily that strong and i don't think that's particularly viable the other things are fine void rain i think is too cute three mana is a lot in legacy especially when we're very susceptible to getting wastelanded so we brought these in because like, oh we, removal we want to kill Merktide regents but then we bring these in and they don't do anything. If we were a Grixis build or something like that, so we'd have red mana, we could have Pyroblast in our deck, which would be way better. And they'd help us resolve stuff a bit better. Like, yes, we have Teferis, but these kind of run contrary to what we're trying to do with the deck here. Because it's a, bl it's a blue and a white three drop when we're trying to cast a black red five drop with no colorless pips in so these things don't feel like they should be in the same deck in my opinion other than that i think the league kind of spoke for itself really we stumbled over ourselves a fair bit and what we were doing just felt like a few steps below what other people were doing years and years and years ago when i sort of first got into legacy when like shadow more law wind block that sort of thing was that i think it was shadow more when, when that came out i started playing legacy and i had a friend who used to play intuition demigod revenge then and it was not great then. And obviously we've gone, we've come a lot further since then. And I don't think it's up to scratch. But, you know, I got to play a league with Demigod of Revenge. And we did get to do the thing one time, even though our opponent scooped. We did manage to put effectively four Demigods of Revenge into play and kill our opponent. So we did get to do the thing one time, which is what you hope for. And I've played this deck, so you didn't have to. Uh, which means you should definitely like, comment and subscribe, right? Who else is doing this for you? Okay, we're done for today. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.